Hi, everyone. Welcome. Thanks so much. I'm going to give us a few minutes for people to trickle in from the weight room here and join us for tonight's presentation. Thanks for coming along and saying hi and joining us for the program tonight. We're excited that you're here. I'm going to go ahead and make sure we pin our presenters here so that everyone can see them say hi throughout the chat. I think we're probably good to start. Um, so my name is Jake Dietrich. I'm Assistant Director of Admissions up here at Syracuse University in the Central Office of Admissions. I'm joined tonight by my colleagues Amon, Rachel, and Wes, who I'll have introduced themselves in just a moment. Um, but tonight, we're going to talk communications and writing and the different ways that you can pursue those fields at Syracuse. Before I kind of kick us off with a little bit more of a general look at these different programs and what Syracuse is like and how we're structured, where we are, some of the basics real quick, um, why don't we start with introductions? Introduction, sorry. Rachel, would you mind doing a quick hello? Absolutely. Hi, everybody. My name is Rachel Skipper. I am the Assistant Director of Undergraduate Recruitment for the College of Arts and Sciences and the Maxwell School at Syracuse. Although our writing and communications related programs are really housed within arts and sciences, so that's what I'll be focusing on for the most part tonight. Awesome. Thanks so much. Wes, would you mind going next? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Jake. Um, so hi, everybody. Welcome. My name is Wes Whiteside. I'm the Associate Director for Recruitment and Diversity at the SI Newhouse School of Public Communications. And uh, within all of our majors, there's writing and, of course, communication, right? That's our school. So I'm um, so happy to be here. Awesome. Thanks so much. And Iman, last but not least. Hi, everyone. My name is Iman Wilkinson. I am a undergraduate recruitment specialist for the College of Visual and Performing Arts, and I will be talking about our communication and rhetorical studies program. While it is a little bit different than our other programs, but it is a good one to talk about. <laughs> I'm so excited for this. Thanks so much. I have three of my favorite people in the world on, on the call with me and some really fun topics to hit on, so I'm really excited for this presentation. Um, just to kick things off, I want to talk a little bit about Syracuse and some of the foundational aspects here. You know, we're a community of about 15,000 undergraduate students, but as you can see, we have the representatives for three of our nine undergraduate schools and colleges here with us tonight. Uh, at Syracuse, you kind of have the resources of a large school with research opportunities, career paths, in, uh, entrepreneurial resources, and more, uh, but you have the day-to-day -day of a much smaller institution, and so you have the opportunity to work with people in a more one-on-one -on -one capacity, get to know your professors and faculty, get access to the things that are gonna make your college experience more meaningful and really personalize your education in a way that's gonna you know, help you get through this in, in a really meaningful capacity, right? Like students here are not going through some cookie cutter college model where they're doing all the same things as the person sitting next to them. Instead, you have a lot of different ways to mix and match programs, add minors on in different schools or even another major and try things that you want in a capacity that you want to do them in. And I think having that flexibility is something that really only comes from being able to personalize your education within a larger research university. That balance is a really key aspect of what makes Syracuse students successful. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as well. Um, and we're looking for students that, that add to that, that value that mentality, that essentially we're looking for students who want to leave this place better than it was when they got here. Right? People who are going to get involved in a variety of ways, personalize their experience, and really leave their mark on the Syracuse community before moving on to the next great thing. Uh, and speaking on, of moving on to the next great thing, there's a lot of really great career connections, as we'll talk about in just a moment, to get you set up for the future. Each of our schools and colleges actually has their own career services office that will function more specifically to help you find jobs and opportunities within a field that makes sense for you instead of going to some sort of one size fits all collegiate model. So we wanted to kick things off by talking a little bit more about what that looks like, how career services can connect you to our alumni in particular and other resources that are going to help you get where you want to go. Uh, so Wes, I was wondering if you would be able to talk a little bit about what kind of career opportunities can uh, students from Newhouse and your programs that you're familiar with can uh, find. Yeah, so our majors, which we'll talk about uh, here shortly, but our majors range from anything from advertising to writing to music to television, radio and film to photography, kind of everything in, in your area of communication. So really our students can find jobs everywhere, which they do and around the country and around the world. Uh, so one thing that we do at Newhouse, we do teach writing. 
And uh, we do that early, very early in your freshman year. And then you will have some writing within, within your majors. And of course, um, particularly within your majors that you can do. So um, what we do is we provide our students the opportunity to be successful in the world of communications, whatever that might be. And also, we also keep them uh, ahead of the game. So what's new, what's innovative, what's out there in the next five, 10 years. Uh, so they're not behind uh, when that time comes. Perfect. Thanks so much. I keep forgetting that it makes me double click to unmute myself here when we're broadcasting. <laughs> so sorry for that delay. Um, but just thinking more about communications and writing, I know that that's a really critical part of the Newhouse curriculum, but it's something that as we were kind of talking about earlier, is tied into all these different schools and colleges in different ways. Rachel, would you mind maybe highlighting a few of the kind of communications and writing opportunities that students pursue after graduating with an arts and sciences degree? Yeah, absolutely. So just kind of to touch on arts and sciences a little bit, uh, we do have quite a few different majors and our students who are interested in writing and communications will choose one of two programs that I'll tell you about um, here in a couple of slides. But two examples that we have on this slide for you of students who graduated from our writing and rhetoric program uh, are both working in actually public relations. So Daniel Kitchen, who you see on the list, has more of a sports focus, so sports PR, uh, which is something kind of interesting to most of you, but there is a lot to do with how sports teams and companies portray themselves to the public, right? That's how they get money, that's where they get their funding. So that writing and rhetoric piece is really important, right? It's not just about being a good writer, it's about how you're composing a message and what your purpose is for your audience is. On the slide, we also have Marianne, who is a, also a writing and rhetoric graduate, but instead of focusing on sports for her public relations, she is really interested in personal finance. And you can find her website, The Penny Hoarder, uh, which is uh, kind of a how-to on managing your money and all things finance related. So this is a kind of a totally different topic, right? Financial communication. And again, with the writing and rhetoric program being kind of general, we do see students taking the training they're getting and getting careers in all different fields. And this is really true of Syracuse students. This isn't unique to arts and sciences, but just a couple of examples of how students take a kind of general program and funnel it into an interest that is more specific and more interesting to them. Yeah, I would just note that that kind of broad general curriculum approach that Rachel was talking about is such a core part of what it means to be a Syracuse student here. We really believe in combining your professional programs with the liberal arts experience and taking lots of different classes and having the freedom to pick and choose all these different kind of opportunities for yourself that can help you become a more adaptable and flexible worker in the future and, and member of a team environment and more. Um, before we get to it, Iman here, I just want to uh, mention really quickly too, if you have any questions or anything that pops into your head as we're going forward today, please, please, please feel free to put it into the question and answer uh, function. We've got some great colleagues in the back, Kate, Mike, and Jessica, who are going to be working to help facilitate and answer questions throughout this. And they might put a few up for me to talk about and connect to our presenters as well so that we can get you an answer either in writing or on camera. Uh, so don't hesitate to start typing those in right now and throughout the presentation. We're happy to stay in the loop there. Um, but Rachel had brought up writing and rhetoric, and I think rhetoric is one of those ideas and key themes that's going to pop up a lot tonight, and you see it in the title of a couple of our different majors, including in communication and rhetorical studies. Uh, so Iman, would you be able to talk just a little bit about what that CRS degree really looks like and, and what you see alumni getting off into after they graduate? Sure. First, I'd like to start out with saying, yes, we're housed in the College of Visual and Performing Arts, even though communication and rhetorical studies seems kind of out of place. I'd like to explain that just a little bit. Uh, it originally grew out of our drama program, but now it's sustaining itself as a program that focuses on all forms of human communication. So it's a great program because it's very flexible and versatile. So I see a lot of our students going in lots of different paths when they come in to the degree with their interests. And they, our professors like to say that they are preparing our students for jobs that don't even exist yet. So our students are learning how to use communication to be a vehicle for them, but also solving world problems. So speaking of solving problems, I'd like to touch on Emmy. Uh, she is one of our alums and she created the Fashion Without Limits program here at Syracuse for our students within the fashion design major. So what Fashion Without Limits is, is basically a program that was really promoted to, kind of created to promote the designs and sizes 12 and up. 
So as a part of the curriculum, our students have to make these pieces in sizes 12 and up. So, and then at the end of, end of that semester, Emmy then comes back and she chooses the best design. Then that design is then worn and produced by, by Emmy herself. I love that it's a part of the core curriculum because it said that students who don't design for the everyday average people, they're leaving about $6 billion on the table. So we're really trying to equip our students to be successful in any avenue they choose to pursue. Then another alumni I like to touch on who is in a totally different path is uh, Evan Robinson. He is the co-founder of New York on Tech which is a nonprofit organization that brings, under, uh, brings technology to underrepresented students in New York City. So as you can see, our graduates go into a multitude of different paths while they use communication as their vehicle to kind of thrust them forward. I think that's such a great opportunity to hear how students can have their work shown off in those different professional spaces. That's so cool. Um, and I wanna kind of segue that to just show a quick image here on our next slide, just a little bit about other places students have worked and opportunities that they've had after they've graduated, after going through these different types of programs. So thank you so much for that. Um, I think tonight we're gonna take turns here and talk a little bit from VPA, a little bit from Newhouse, a little bit from Arts and Sciences, not necessarily in that order actually, um, but we'll make sure to kind of talk a little bit about the curriculum and the programs in each of these and how they can be distinctly different and yet still provide you an opportunity to work in similar fields. Um, so without further ado, I'd like to start everything off with Iman, actually, if you're all right, going first, we'll talk a little bit about visual and performing arts and the CRS opportunities available in that particular program. Thanks, Jake. So as I mentioned, it is a program that focuses on all forms of human communication. And I would like to say that the number one skill that mostly all employees are seeking our communication skills. So within our program, our students are learning how to communicate clearly, effectively, and persuasively. So some of the classes that they can take will range from presentation of speaking, rhetoric, public advocacy, argumentation, interviewing. So all really core classes that can be applied to any number of fields. And as I mentioned, it is a very uh, flexible and versatile um, major basically what i'm trying to say is that it only really has four requirements within crs and then all of your other classes are going to be crs electives as well as other electives on campus so what the majority of our students do is that they'll pursue a double major if they wanted to so usually our students have a double major or two minors because of the flexibility of the crs degree We've seen our students intern at places like, uh, let's see, news stations, record labels, magazine, magazines, political campaigns. Uh, we've had a recent graduate, she was uh, interning at one of the local uh, county clerk judge's office. So most of our students are interested in a variety of paths. I've uh, talked to many of our students and they said that in any given day, they can go into a CRS class and it'd be say 10 or 12 other students and they all have different career goals that they want to achieve. Maybe someone wants to be a writer at Disney, someone wants to go into law, someone wants to go into entertainment. And it's all very possible with CRS because of the flexibility and how our students can kind of tailor make their own major in education while using the program. And I'd like to touch on some of the other communications programs within the College of Visual and Performing Arts. So we have a BFA, Bachelor of Fine Arts in Communications Design, Art Photography, and Film as well. If those were some of the other things you were thinking about, I know that a lot of our students will use their um, kind of electives to take other classes that they're interested in on campus. So say they're interested in writing for films, they will take some elective classes in the film program, which is you can do that in any of the programs here at SU, which is I think one of the most valuable things that you can do. So I think who's next after me? I think it's uh, Wes. Oh, no, it's Rachel. Thanks, Iman. So just kind of following up, I wanted again, tell you a little bit about the College of Arts and Sciences at Syracuse University. We have two majors that I really think are going to be of interest to the students in this group, and those are English and Textual Studies and Writing and Rhetoric. Um, I will get to Communication Sciences and Disorders at the end of my little spiel here. It is a little bit of a different topic altogether, just one that I like to touch on for clarification. So again, within the College of Arts and Sciences, we really see students learning a skill set 
in this case being communication, writing, rhetorical skills, and then combining with other programs that give those skills meaning. So for example, if you're interested in uh, the environment, it might be useful to take a major in writing and rhetoric and then learn how to communicate about the environment, environmental change or advocacy. So we have an environmental studies program, we have a geography program. So it might be the case for that student that they would take English and textual studies or they would take writing and rhetoric as their major. And then they would tag something on that gives them a field where they channel those skills that they're learning related to writing and communications. So I just wanna tell you a little bit about the difference between the two programs, English and textual studies and writing and rhetoric. I think they can sound very similar on the surface. And those of you who are interested in communication, might have a little trouble choosing between those two programs. So the easiest way to explain the difference between these two programs is that within English and textual studies, you are really analyzing work that others have done. So you are looking at novels, you are looking at blogs, you're looking at uh, political writing and work, you're looking at speeches, and you are thinking about how that kind of writing, text, film, would influence an audience and you're really analyzing it and maybe when you're having something to say it's not something unique to you you're saying uh here's what this text was saying here's why this was or was not successful here's how we can use this in the future so if you're really interested in reading if you're a bookworm this is likely a good program for you you're going to spend a lot of time kind of going through texts that others have done and making your own conclusions about those texts the writing and rhetoric program, on the other hand, is sort of the opposite side of that coin. You are the one generating the texts. So if you're a writer, if you're a blogger, if you're a vlogger, this might be a better major for you. The program is really focused on teaching you how to send a message in all different forms. So that might be using a five paragraph essay like what you've been doing in high school. That might be using a vlog format or a blog format. That might be by creating a podcast or a graphic representation of data, so charts and figures. So it's all about how do I send a message, what type of communication might be appropriate for the audience that I'm targeting, and then how do I do that successfully. So again, these programs either are generating this uh, work in the writing and rhetoric program or analyzing this work in the English and textual studies program. And you will know which of those might be more interesting to you. The third program, which I'll just touch on very briefly, because I don't think it is actually of interest to this audience, but a lot of times students get confused about it, is the Communication Sciences and Business Program. So this is a very STEM heavy program. It prepares you to do two careers, speech pathology and audiology. So if you want to work with patients and help them develop their communication skills, especially in populations that struggle with communication, like younger or older populations, Communication Sciences and Disorders is a good program for you, but is very much a STEM patient medical type program. It is not a communications program like the ones we're talking about tonight. So I'd just like to clear that um, off the table. If, if any of you were kind of thinking about that program and not sure what it's about, I like to clarify that here. And with that, I will pass it off to Wes. Sorry, I lost my where my uh, link was to, to check myself off and turn myself on to mute. Sorry about that. But uh, yeah, thank you, uh, Rachel, for that. So I, as I said, I work in the Newhouse School of Public Communications. And as you see, these are our eight majors that we have associated with communications. And um, what's about new, what thing that you'll find about Newhouse is that in those specific areas are areas of communications, right? Um, but what we do is we do combine some majors together in specific areas of communication. So I'm not really going to dive too deep into all of them, but I will kind of tell you where they're separate. So the first set of majors that we have is advertising and public relations. That's in your area, what we say would be persuasive, right? So getting you to buy something, getting to your field a certain way, getting you to donate right? Actually, what we're doing right now is advertising, if you think about it. Um, also, think about, to what happened with the pandemic. Also, what happened after the George Floyd movement with the Black Lives Matter movement and statements that are coming out. That kind of falls into your area of public relations. Then we have our news majors. That's broadcast and digital journalism and magazine news and digital journalism. Broadcast, if you want to be in front of the camera, 
So if that's weather, that's sports, either play-by-play -play or actually in the studio, that's weather, entertainment, music, uh, fashion, whatever it is going to be, and you want to be in front of the camera, that would be broadcast. If you want to do more writing in those areas, that's going to be magazine news and digital journalism. What you're going to do is you're actually going to pick a track. You're either going to go magazine, which is a little bit longer format, news, meaning it's a specific area, or what we say would be a beat, and then digital journalism is how you're going to put those things directly uh, into a uh, digital platform. So that's online, that's through blogs, that's through vlogs, that's YouTube, that's social media, that's working with 360 degree cameras, that's also working with augmented reality and virtual reality. Then the next set of our majors is what we call our entertainment majors, and that's television, radio, and film, the Bandier program for recording entertainment industries, and then there's photography. Photography has two tracks. Uh, you can go either editorial or, um, ad, I'm sorry, advertising or commercial uh, photography, meaning that you want to take photos into a specific area to sell something or to get to, pe to people to feel a certain way. Um, or there's photojournalism where you're taking something for news. Also kind of tucked into photography, of course, yes, it's lenses, it's lighting, it's uh, cameras, but we also teach cinematography uh, as, as well. The Bandier program is for a student who is interested in music. Um, if you want to go in your area, not necessarily playing an instrument uh, or uh, being an artist, but being more behind the scenes, working at a record label, creating your own record label, working in A&R, being an artist assistant, being a publicist, actually creating a uh, album for an artist or a um, band, um, creating a tour, writing about a band or an artist. All that area is within the Bandia program for music entertainment. And then television, radio, and film, all three, as you see. But what we do is you pick a specific area that you want to go in, either television, radio, and film, and then you concentrate in a specific area. So if you want to go screenwriting, if you want to go producing or editing or special effects, or if you want to act and be in front of the camera, uh, or you want to work on the business side of things, such as how much is this movie going to cost to make? How much are we gonna pay uh, this actor to be in, my, in our television show? We need ads for our radio station, right? So that kind of all plays in, into that area. And then lastly, graphic design. Graphic design entails all of our majors. Our students tell their, um, their stories a little bit more in a visual sense. So it's for something as um, easy as a logo, you know, Nike, Starbucks, Target, McDonald's, right? all the way into when you open up your cell phone and the way your cell phone opens up and goes to your home screen or the way your iPad opens up or your home screen is set up. That's what we call is a UX UI or interface. Now, the writing piece, there's writing in every single one of our majors and that's what we believe in. That's actually one of the first classes that you take in all of your majors is writing. Even if you wanna go into photography, we're gonna teach you writing. Even if you wanna go into film and be a producer, we're gonna teach you writing. Um, because we feel that if we can teach you how to be a great writer, you have no problem in being such as in front of a camera and telling a story and broadcast or taking a photo and telling yourself, uh, telling something more visual, okay? So, so that's what we teach within those eight majors. Jake, you can go to the next slide. Also, what's special about Newhouse is we do offer dual programs. So, as you heard from Rachel, and if you're thinking about, hey, I wanna write, I wanna be a screenwriter, I might go into the, one of the writing and rhetoric, or I might go into one of the creative writing uh, areas. I can add that as a dual major. Uh, also, what we do is we require our students to have a minor. We're the only school at the university that does that. We say, yes, you're in communications, but what are you going to communicate about? You can't minor in Newhouse. We actually make you leave the nest and find a minor somewhere else, nor can you do a major in Newhouse. Once again, we want you to leave your nest in the area of communications and find a specific area. So you see the dual with arts and sciences. We also have a dual with the Whitman School of Management, which is our business school. We also have a dual with the uh, School of Information or which is our iSchool. We often find students who find minors in communications and rhetorical studies where um, uh, visual performing arts as a, mind, as a mind was mentioned into you. We see students go into sport management and sport analytics, which is in the David B. Falk College of Sport and Human Dynamics um, as well. So those are multiple areas where you can find uh, what we say is uh, an add on to your new house major. And then you can go to the next slide. And, and then lastly, a part of communications is an opportunity to travel. 
Uh, we do allow our students to go not only abroad to another country, but you can go to New York in LA. And then when you do in New York at LA, these are domestic semesters where our students will go. They will find internships. We actually help them find the internship. And then you will actually do your internship half the day. And then you take your new house classes in the evening. So as you see at the top there, that's our New York City. Uh, as I see our, our students uh, there showing you the skyline in New York City. And then also going to The Daily Show with Trevor Noah. Uh, and students have found internships uh, there as well because it's a networking piece. Uh, and then uh, the bottom you see there, um, that's the LA, the skyline of LA. And then you see that our students actually went to Warner Brothers. So there are some lunch and learns where our students can go. You'll be meeting with some of our amazing alums. And like I said, the networking piece is there. Majority of our students go uh, junior, the majority of them, uh, some major majority of junior and senior year, but most of them go their senior year because that's where they wanna work. They either wanna work in New York or they either wanna work in LA. And when you finish that internship, they know who you are, right? And sometimes that turns into jobs to some of our students. Perfect, thank you so much, Wes. And I'm sure if our panelists can join me back up here on the video, we'll kind of wrap up by answering some of your questions at this time and talking a little bit more broadly about some of the things we've already covered. Um, I saw a couple questions come in as we were talking just about kind of selecting schools, what that looks like. So. I wanted to just from a central admissions point of view offer a quick note on the application itself. Um, students are actually able to rank up to two of our nine schools and colleges on their application and so you can list either one of these or, or two of these or sometimes more and just say these are two programs I really see myself fitting into at Syracuse. I'd like you to consider me for admission in this order and we when reading and reviewing applications look at students first for their first choice, second for their second, but never the other way around and as you can tell you know, part of what we did this program for tonight is to highlight the different ways that you can pursue communications fields with a different undergraduate preparation and background. And so it's totally okay to have more than one way of fitting into Syracuse and more than one program of interest. In fact, you know, 20% of our students do more than one major. So it's, we encourage you to think outside the box and try out different things in different ways. If you have questions about what program you should list second or, you know, do you have any other programs that we haven't mentioned tonight? You're always welcome to send us an email. Our contact information is on the screen here. Um, and we're happy to walk you through a little bit more about that as well. I believe my colleagues will put um, orange at syr.edu, sorry, into the chat um, so that you can reach central admissions that way too. And we're always happy to make connections for you. Um, so as we were talking Wes, the first question I actually wanted to hit on before we got too far is about digital journalism and how it's listed both with broadcast and with magazine and news. And we were wondering if you could talk a little bit more about that, what digital journalism means pertinent to both of those programs. Yeah, so really how everything is set up currently, right? So and we're in the digital age. So if you think about broadcast and how things, how the news is shot, right? Um, if it's 4K, if it's 8K, if it's streaming online, that's all a part of digital, right? And that's what we're teaching our students of how to do that. Um, not just your regular newscast of you sitting and being at an anchor desk, but it's you being in your room and being able to put that on Facebook or you to put that on social media. And the same thing is with magazine news and digital journalism too the way newspapers and magazines are, it's not a, long, it's not a lot of print anymore. Uh, things have moved directly online. So we're teaching our students when you're creating that magazine to keep in mind, it is going to be touchscreen. When the person flips the page, it's not gonna be a page. It's probably gonna be them moving the screen and how is that going to work? How is that going to look? Uh, also our students blogging, vlogging is a big deal. Um, podcasting is huge as well. So that's why we added the digital pieces uh, there because we want to prepare our students for what's happening in the future. Um, instead of, you know, being waiting for, for, you know, waiting for like them to, to learn it once they leave, we teach them that now because it prepares them for really any position. We have students in broadcast who go into magazine. We have students in magazine who go into advertising. We have students in television, radio, and film who go into music and entertainment. So we prepare our students within all of our majors. Basically, what we like to say is jobs are based off of skills. So if you can learn those skills within your uh, different new house majors, you have no problem with finding a job uh, in anywhere. Thank you so much. Yeah, and I believe you mentioned a couple of different opportunities like podcasts made me think of something Iman had said earlier about preparing students for jobs that don't exist yet. 
which I think is such a cool concept. And I, th I think about like influencers and podcasts and some other roles that 30 years ago were just not a thing, but now are really prominent opportunities for a lot of people. Um, and so it's definitely cool to think about not just, you know, not just I'm going to go to school, get my degree and work exactly in that field, but how can you use this degree to change the field and to pursue something new that maybe didn't exist in that space before? Um, Iman, did you have something you wanted to add to that? I'm sorry. Yeah, so I'm just going to say that our faculty, they are doing research in the field and they know that the market is ever changing. So we do have lots of published faculty where they bring in new concepts to classes. So I know one of the big classes that they just added in was basically looking at memes and politics and how those memes kind of have they play a part in a you know they play a bigger part than we think just on social media so that's why our students are learning the the most up-to-date things that are happening outside in the world because our faculty are still you know researching and growing with the times absolutely thanks so much um and actually as we've been talking we've gotten quite a few questions i know we mentioned this at the beginning and, and looked at emmy and and some other Kind of alumni and what jobs they're doing but we got quite a few questions about just job opportunities as well including one that's specific to writing and rhetoric so rachel would you mind um if you can think of any students off the top of your head that have kind of gone through writing and rhetoric and found communications opportunities if there's a cool example that you might know of i'd love to hear a little bit more about it um, and i'll let you take the floor <laughs> yeah absolutely so i was kind of thinking about this earlier uh, weird things students do with writing and communications that you wouldn't initially think that is a good field, um, which kind of underscores the point that Wes and Iman have both been making that you can take these skills and use them anywhere. So one interesting example is medical school and careers in medicine. So if you are a STEM student, right, you like STEM, but you're kind of torn between, should I go with this writing side of my academic interest or the STEM side of my academic interest? That's something that's popular within arts and sciences. And we have had writing and rhetoric students accepted to medical school. Uh, so if you can kind of think about the kind of training you'd expect for med school, right? You're thinking biochemistry, chemistry, organic chemistry, all of that. But another thing that medical professionals do is talk to people and communicate in what are some pretty stressful and difficult situations, right? They even sometimes need to convince people to do things based on their training and their training has done nothing to prepare them for that context, right? So something that interesting that a student has done with writing and rhetoric is to go to med school and be a really effective communicator among a group of people that is really not trained in communication. And how valuable, right, would that employee be? Someone who has all of the training in this other area, but is also a really effective communicator. And so that's something I, I would like to emphasize about arts and sciences is that 50% of our students are doing a, a double major. 75% of our students are at least doing a minor. So that's what we wanna see you do, right? You can go into careers in any of the 55 other programs that we offer, but what we want you to do is have good communication skills. So the writing and rhetoric program can prepare you for the same fields that any of our other students are doing. You're just gonna be a really good communicator and more hireable for it. Absolutely, yeah, I think that's a really a point well made. I wanna note while it's on my mind too, that if you're looking for more student stories and opportunities from uh, kind of the people who actually worked them, um, and one resource is to either do one of the individual sessions that we offer. Each of our schools and colleges here host sessions throughout the week that you can join in to learn more specifically about that particular program. Uh, and we also offer student panels Monday nights at eight. And so if you have the time, it's really great to call in and talk to current students and hear what they're saying about their experiences and different jobs and internships they've worked so you can get a little bit more um, from, from the students that are doing those positions right now. Uh, we've got a couple questions here too about Kind of the flexibility in academics, which I know I mentioned briefly, but just thinking about double majors, what does that look like for, for your programs within the same school versus with the adding a major on in a different school or program? Wes, would you be able to talk a little bit more about the likelihood of a student double majoring both within Newhouse or doing one in one and one in Newhouse and one in the other? Sorry. Oh, Wes, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So um, as I mentioned, we don't allow students to double major in Newhouse or minor in Newhouse, so you would actually find that outside. Um, and one of the things to think about is you don't necessarily have to come in knowing what your dual major is. I tell students, especially the minor, even though the minor is required, don't even come in and think about the minor um, because you have until the end of your sophomore year uh, to find your minor. So I like to say, just experience it and then you'll find out what, what your interests are. But the dual major, 
um, you know, they go, a lot of our, majority of our students do the arts and sciences because we require 50% of our overall degree is in liberal arts. And that's where arts and sciences is. So for a lot of our students, it just makes sense for them uh, where they say, hey, I have to take these classes anyway. And I already have a passion for political science or international relations. I might as well add that. Or I love psychology or I want to learn a little bit more about LGBTQ studies or African-American studies or sociology. And I'll, I'll pick that up. Or some students will go, like I said, to the Whitman School of Management if they want to do business. Uh, some students say, I want to do finance, accounting, risk management, management, add that. Or then the School of Information Studies or the iSchool. And you may be asking, what is that? Well, the iSchool, um, it's a great mixture of like, um, if you're interested in doing like web design, or if you're interested in doing startups, or if you're interested in information technology and data analytics, right? That would be um, in the information study. So we do find students will find their way uh, in, into the iSchool. But minors, minors are everywhere, uh, literally. Uh, when I say in all, in, in the different colleges besides Newhouse, literally everywhere. We have students go to VPA and do theater. We have students go to VPA and do um, drawing and animation and visual performing arts. And then I've even seen a student go to um, engineering and pick up a computer uh, science minor because it's available. Absolutely. And Iman, I know that um, visual performing arts tends to have uh, some pretty specific programs, right? When you look at a musical theater, you look at an acting, uh, they tend to be difficult to add another major on with because of the specific nature of the work you're doing there. But with communication or rhetorical studies, is that the same do you find or are students adding more programs on outside of that? Definitely, it is the, the more of the different uh, degree type in VPA. So majority of the other degree types are BFA, Bachelor of Fine Arts, where you're gonna be spending a lot more time in your studio-based classes. As opposed to CRS, it is a more versatile mix where you can go out and pursue other interests on campus. In fact, we encourage that. You know, we you are at a major research one institution, so we want you to take advantage of that. So most of our students, like I said, they would have a double minor and uh, a double minor or a double major. And the more popular major that I see our students are doing is political science. They'll do some stuff in arts and sciences if that's something they wanted to do. So really the, um, the degree can be used in any type of fashion that our students want to pursue. That's absolutely true. Thank you so much. I'm glad to hear that. And Rachel, just to round that out, I know arts and sciences is kind of the home of our institution in a lot of ways. And as you mentioned, has 55 different majors. It was the first brick on campus back in 1870. Um, can you tell us a little bit more too about what that looks like within a college that's home to 55 different majors as opposed to just a couple more specific ones? <laughs> yes, there are pros and cons to that. I can be honest. So where if you're in VPA, you're gonna be surrounded by creative people. No getting out of that, right? If you're in Newhouse, you're going to be surrounded by students who all really have that focus on public communications, and that can be a really valuable thing. In arts and sciences, you'll be around everyone. So Wes just gave some really great examples, political science, international relations, sociology, LGBTQ studies, uh, women's and gender studies, modern Jewish studies. Um, there are just so many different programs within arts and sciences that really run the gamut from STEM programs uh, to humanities programs, so things like religion, ethics, uh, what's our mentioned sociology or anthropology, uh, into the political science type programs like policy studies, uh, political science, um, international relations. So yes, you will be a student within a network of all different kinds of students. And, and while sometimes that could be intimidating, it also is a really great way to gain perspective get ideas from other students, get networking connections, and again, find ways that you're going to apply your skills, figure out what motivates you. So what an example of a student who did this, um, I mentioned the environmental science point earlier, that was from a real student. She's a student in the honors program. Her name is also Rachel. She uh, used her communication skills and she is doing undergraduate research in environmental science and her whole point of doing research is to find out how can we communicate about climate change in ways that are effective and don't put people off, right? So we all know, you know, the climate change warrior who barges in your house and points out your Tupperware and criticizes your Ziploc bags, right? Not a good rhetorical move. A student in writing and rhetoric would analyze that and say, what are more effective ways that we can communicate about this? What makes people want to help 
with these issues instead of push back and maybe feel attacked. And that's something that we see in politics. It's something that we see in any kind of advocacy uh, where you have to be smart about the moves you're making. And so in arts and sciences, you'll be around a lot of other students who care about all these different topics. And it should be very motivating to you. It should give you a more well-rounded education and a more well-rounded group of peers. Uh, so that's kind of the point of the liberal arts core. That's the arts and sciences thing, is all of these other topics under one roof that are mixing and mingling and coming up with unique combinations that make sense for the individual student. Absolutely, thanks so much. I love that example. That's, I think that's really fun. Um, you know, I want to note too, while we have a few minutes here left, we may not get to every single question that's asked tonight. Um, but my colleague, Jessica, I believe has put orange at syr.edu into the chat. And you're always more than welcome to send some of the more specific questions you might have that may be a little uh, personalized just to you and your search there so that we can work with you one-on-one -on -one and, and help connect you to some really meaningful resources. Um, so we're going to take one or two more questions and then we'll be sure to conclude just in time. But um, one question that came through that I think is really important to talk about is what studying abroad or in other spaces looks like. I know Wes had mentioned New York City and LA as great resources. Um, Iman, do students in CRS study abroad at all? Uh, they definitely do. And I think a lot of our students in BPA are a little bit envious of them because they can study abroad at any one of the six world centers we have, just because, like I said, the degree is versatile. So they can apply those credits to any of the centers and they really get to pick a place that really works for them and that they want to go ahead and explore. I know um, we touched on a couple of domestic study abroad. One of the places that our students usually go for about a week is Washington DC, really popular because they get to go down there, see the kind of inner workings of DC. One of the more things that I like to touch on that happened a couple of years ago is the group that went, they actually got to meet and work with uh, President Obama's speechwriter which is pretty cool because they got to really see how things work in politics within Washington DC firsthand. So cool things happening, all the study abroad programs. And like I said, students can go to any one of the world centers just depending on what they worked out with their academic advisor and what they actually want to do. I know students study abroad multiple times. They'll do a kind of full term semester and then they'll do a domestic study abroad as well. So a couple of opportunities. Absolutely, thanks. Yeah, I very much uh, believe in the power of studying abroad and the importance of doing so while you're in college. Um, just a quick note, it is built into the curriculum. About half of our students go, and we were recently ranked the seventh best program for studying abroad in the country. So this is a big focus for us, and there's a lot of opportunities to get out and explore, and there's a huge emphasis on doing so here at SU. Um, so thanks. I think we've covered it pretty extensively already. So I'd like to wrap up with just one last question um, for each of you. We'll start with Wes, then move to Rachel, and then Iman, if you wouldn't mind wrapping up. Um, but Wes, do you have any advice, any, like, quick kind of notes you would give to students looking to join the new house community? What do you think is important for them to keep in mind as they navigate this process? Uh, wow, that's a, that's a great question. Uh, I guess I would say attend one of my information sessions. I think I would start there first. I do two information sessions a week, uh, Mondays and Wednesdays at 4 p.m. Eastern, St Eastern Standard Time. We also offer two tours. So if you wanna see the facilities of New House, we offer a tour at 11 a.m. on Tuesdays and a tour at 3 p.m. on Thursdays. And then on Fridays, we actually have what's called fireside chats with our New House ambassadors. So our current New House students, you can ask questions about. Um, as you see here, I've got my fireside chat, my fireside that I have here that our students uh, will have in front of them as well. So you can come and ask questions. But um, as far as what we're looking for in Newhouse, we're looking for storytellers. Um, and our students tell stories in multiple ways. Your personal statement is, a, is something to really concentrate on. Um, you know, tell a story. That's what we want to see. Also, if you're going to put Newhouse on there, make sure Newhouse is one word, not two. Uh, you'll be surprised of how many students uh, do that. So, um, but also when it comes to the college selection process, I would recommend taking your time, enjoy it, embrace it, um, have fun with it. I like to say it's like trying on a pair of shoes or getting a pair of shoes. I'm a sneakerhead, so I, I, I love, my, love buying shoes. And you want a pair of shoes that's not too big, not too small, but a room for growth. So uncomfortable. And of course, stylish. And you look good in orange, I'll tell you that. So uh, that's the advice that I'd give to you. Absolutely, thank you so much. I should note before we move on and ask Rachel the same question, um, these programs that we've been talking about tonight, 
and the opportunities to learn more about the, uh, each school are actually virtual. We are still closed to visitation currently in any capacity. Um, and I'm sure you, know, you can understand why about 90% of our students are here on campus right now. We're doing everything we can to make sure that they stay safe and healthy. And our students have done a wonderful job of being selfless and respectful of each other and, and working hard in that space to make sure that we can all get through this experience together. So with that in mind, it's, it would not be a responsible thing for us to bring more people into that bubble and, and you know, potentially cause an unnecessary risk. So at the moment, while we can't welcome you to campus in person, these virtual resources are really important and we're always happy to chat more on camera if it's something that would be beneficial to you. Um, but Rachel, just along the same lines, um, for students looking into arts and sciences in these programs more specifically, what advice do you have for them? So if I'm the one reading your application, my advice is to proofread, and I do read a lot of applications. So I can't tell you how bad an impression it makes when you have the wrong school. I'm so excited to be applying to NYU, and here's why. Don't care, right? So be sure to go in and proofread your essays. You are all writing fanatics, we hope, we think, right? You're here. Use that skill to your advantage, right? Don't um, get to be a last minute submission. Don't start thinking about your application essays the night of. You're all perfectionists, right? You want to do well in these essays. So allow yourself to do that. Think critically about what you're going to write. Make sure you tell a unique story. Uh, make sure that when I read your application, I wanna send it over to Jake and say, hey Jake, you're not gonna believe this awesome essay I just wrote or I just read. And believe me, that does happen. I'm sure that Jake and I could dig up some of those emails from last year's applicant pool. So make sure you're standing out. Your writing is your way to be unique and you're all good at it. So allow that skill to shine in the application. And then a specific point to arts and sciences, because I think that point probably applies to anyone reviewing applications at Syracuse, but something that we are really looking for in arts and sciences, and especially when we're thinking about scholarship recommendations, is leadership. Right, so we don't care if you've participated in 15 student clubs and organizations. We care where you've been a leader. If you have led three organizations, that's better than a laundry list of 15 that you had very little involvement in. So think about a way, again, like Wes said, to be a storyteller. Use your activities in your applications to show us what causes and topics you care about and show us how you would take what you've done as a leader in your high school or secondary school experience to come be a leader on our campus. So that's something for arts and sciences that we really look for and that's something that helps us select which students really stand out when we're making scholarship decisions. And I know that that scholarship decision is equally important to a lot of you as the admissions decision. So a little bit scholarship specific, but I think we can agree that we all care very much about scholarships. So I think that's useful advice. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And if you want to learn more about scholarships and the admissions review process and what that looks like, feel free to contact us directly at the central office. I've also put my email in the chat in case you'd like to reach out to me individually as well. I'm always happy to be a resource. So Iman, it's maybe not fair of me to ask you to go last year because uh, I think we've covered so much already. But do you have anything to add that maybe we haven't quite hit on that might be a little more CRS or VPA specific? Yeah, so I think my both of my colleagues covered everything pretty well with proofreading and make sure that you know you are highlighting your writing skills. But one of the things that I want to say is do your research and make sure that you are having an open mind when you're going into college because lots of times I'll talk to students and they'll come in, they'll say, I want to do three majors. I want to do A, B, and C. And then they get on campus and then they completely discover that they want to do something else and they found a love of something else within Syracuse. So be open and come to a place that you know that you can explore all of your opportunities without being shut off. So that's one of the things that I just wanted to add in. Absolutely. There are very few places that can say they have 200 majors and 100 minors and lots of different ways to kind of change your mind all in one campus. So definitely good to think about the college experience more holistically and not just as an individual effort. Remember, you're a Syracuse student first and foremost. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us tonight, everyone. I would love to give a, a quiet, maybe round of applause to our wonderful panelists here for helping us out tonight. Please, again, feel free to contact any of us individually. We're so happy to help you navigate this process and enjoy the rest of your evenings. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.